Hello everyone, my name is Richard from Home Tech Video. In this video we're going to be covering object detection. Um, two different areas of object detection we're going to cover is object travel in pixels and what this means and then also the reset detector when an object exceeds a certain percentage. Now in this video if you see that the object crosses zones um, and anything is filled in here is checked, ignore this because it is actually not enabled in the video so it has no part in the um, recordings or anything that you've seen. Now when trying to understand the pixel travel distance, you got to remember the higher resolution your camera is producing an image as, the tighter your pixels are going to be grouped. Therefore, the closer or the shorter of distance an object is, needed, is going to need to travel because that pixel distance is much smaller. Now the lower the resolution of a camera that you have, such as a 720p, the pixels are going to be spaced out more. Therefore, the pixel travel distance is going to be much larger in distance. So 100 pixels on a higher resolution camera is going to be much smaller travel distance than 100 pixels on a lower resolution camera. Now in this program I can take the front door camera image and in this case I have the image set at 1920 by 1080 resolution. Um, if I zoom in on the front mailbox you can actually see what this program sees as individual pixels. So you can kind of see how many pixels wide the mailbox is. As I zoom back out here, I can change the tool here from the brush and make a line. The brush width of this line is exactly at 100 pixels. If I change it to 50 pixels, you can see that the line gets much smaller. And then if I change this back to 200 pixels, the line gets larger. I'm going to set this back to 100 pixels to give an example of when I change the resolution. Now I'm going to change the resolution here to um, 2688 by 1512 resolution. As you notice when I hit OK, the picture gets much larger. This is because there's more pixels occupying the image. So I need to zoom out to be able to see the entire image. Now when I create, when I zoom in on the mailbox, you can notice that there's much more pixels um, to make up the mailbox. Now when I create a line this time, at the exact same 100 pixels, the black line that you've seen before, the line is going to be much shorter in distance. This is because there's more pixels in this image than there was before. Now in this example, I'm going to show you how sensitive that blue iris can actually detect objects as. The object size is at the highest sensitivity and contrast is at the lowest. And um, ignore use zones and hotspots in this example because I actually don't have anything set up in here. So under object detection, I don't have any type of motion um, setting set as an object. So anything that blue iris sees as motion, even the slightest bit, the green rectangle is going to go around it and it thinks that that is an actual object. So without any actual defined rules, everything that's even moving on the screen, blue iris detects as an object. Now, one little quick setting that you could do in here to basically refine this is if you go into the object detection settings and check object travel. Now, 150 pixels is how much that an object would need to move in order to render as an actual moving object. As you can see in this example, nothing has changed other than me saying that an object needs to move 150 pixels. This video is only taking about 30 seconds later and as you can see, there's not nearly as much um, false triggers or false things showing up as an object. As I move across the screen, I'm moving more than 150 pixels, therefore it's detecting me as an object. Now when talking about the object reset detector when an object exceeds a certain percentage, basically what this means is when an object is detected on the screen that's larger than a certain percentage, it's going to reset the detector. So I'm going to draw a square here. The square is at 20, uh, 223 by 319. This square occupies 21% of the screen. A vehicle moving down the road, if I draw a square here, would occupy around 16.7% of the screen. So how the reset object detector when object exceeds a percentage works is like this. I'm going to set it to 30% and then all of my motion sensitivity settings are set to the maximum it could be minimum duration. That way I get the most interference with the, uh, the tree swing and the wind here on my camera. 
when this camera reboots, anything that exceeds 30%, so these green squares that keep on going larger, as soon as that image goes above 30%, the camera resets the detector just like that. So you see the squares get larger, larger, larger. Once it hits the 30%, it resets. What this function is ultimately going to help you do is cut down on the false alarms from major light uh, light changes or scene changes, such as a, um, a bug flying in front of the, wind, uh, the camera at nighttime, or in the event of a really heavy downpour, if you have rain falling off your uh, roof in front of the camera, um, that constant rain in front of the camera is not going to be setting off your uh, triggers because it's going to be occupying the majority of the camera space. So I hope you guys like this video and it helps you understand a little bit more about the object detection and the uh, advanced settings that you have under there and how those all, all those features work. If you guys enjoyed this video, just make sure that you subscribe and give me the thumbs up. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.